so we need iis service to host a web server so you should have a separate server for hosting the website in our network we will use 10.0.0.1 only so first we will see what is this iis So guys, IIS is a web server to host a website. We need a web server to host a websites. And uh, Linux has an Apache web server. And uh, in Microsoft, we have IIS. And websites makes our life easy, like Gmail. Okay, so Gmail is used to sending the emails. Okay, if, if the website, if this Gmail is not there or any email server is not there, again, you need to send the mails, okay, via post office. Okay, it will take a lot of time and uh, how it is making your life easy, like online classes, e-commerce website, etc. So IAS stands for Internet Information Services. And it is a service that is used to host the information over the internet, or you can say it is a server to host the websites. And it provides integrated, secured, scalable, and manageable web server capabilities over the internet. Integrated means it is integrated with Windows client operating system and server operating system. So this service is integrated. You can use the Windows client operating system to host the website. You can use the server operating system as well, which means we can host a website on client and server operating system. No need to purchase a license. This is the meaning of integrated service. Service is integrated. You don't need to purchase a separate license. We can increase or decrease the storage on web server as per our requirement. Let us say we have purchased one GB storage and after some time you want to decrease it to 500 MB or after some time you want to increase it to 5 GB, you can increase it. Okay, this is the meaning. This is the meaning of this scalable. Scalable means we can increase or decrease the size of the storage. And we can manage the web server over the internet. And guys, if you are using the client operating system like Windows 10, so it should be a professional or enterprise edition, but not the home edition. Okay. If you use the home edition, you can't host the, you can't install the IIS service. It should be either professional or enterprise edition. And guys, what is a website? Website is a collection of web pages developed by a web developer. So websites are developed by the web developer. It is not the responsibility of system engineer or network engineer. And it is a collection of pages. So let me show you what is the meaning of page. When you open the Cisco site, this page, okay, it is this, whatever you are saying on this screen it is a page okay so like this it is having multiple pages product and service page solution page support page if you open this link it will get one more page so website it is, it is a collection of multiple pages okay so now we have got one more page so it is a collection of pages so what is a website website is a collection of web pages developed by web developer and the file extension 
should be dot html so whenever you are creating any website and you are hosting on iis the extension should be html okay so save this html file in the server and host the website so what we do we ask the developer to develop a website and we will ask him to save the website in html format and we will take all the pages all the files and we will host them in iis server so the website is de website development is done by a web developer website hosting is done by the system administrator okay so these are the two different tasks website is created by the developer after the developer will provide the website to the administrator administrator will host this website on the server okay so the is features supports ip version 4 and ip version 6 we can take and we can restore the website configuration it will do it automatically and isolation of users so we can restrict users to access the website and uh, support for application developers and programmers so it is supporting the application developer and pro programmers for example when you open any file on gmail let us say your friend has sent you one what file he has attached one word file in gmail and he has sent it to you when you if you want to see this word file what you will do you need to download this word file and on your computer ms office should be installed if it is not installed you can't open this word file so with the help of this is 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 providing this feature application developer and programmer which means if the if ms office is not installed on your computer what you will do you will open this word file okay on your gmail itself and it will open okay it is it is not compulsory that you have ms office installed on your pc you can open it directly in your gmail okay it is because of this application developer and programmer feature and using is we can create http https and ftp sites http so guys let us try to understand what is this http http is the acronym of hypertext transfer protocol this is the full form of this http and a protocol used to transfer the hypertext so what is the meaning okay it is http and the full form is hypertext transfer protocol so this it is a protocol which is used to transfer the hypertext what is the meaning of this hypertext hypertext is an outdated word for text okay so this is the protocol which is used to transfer your text okay so a protocol used to transfer the hypertext or text and protocol what is this what is the meaning of protocol protocol is a set of rules that allows the communication between two computers okay so using this protocol you will send the text and http uh, transfer the data from source to destination but in clear text and it is not a secure protocol and what is the alternative to http the alternative to http is https hypertext transfer protocol secure is an extension of http it is used to it is used for secured communication over a computer network what it does it encrypts the data from source to destination https and this protocol is easy to configure okay and it provides security and encrypts the data over uh, data to secure the sensitive data so what this http does it encrypts the data it protects your sensitive data and the numbers are 
guys the port number of http is 80 remember this port number but what is this port number why we are providing the number to this protocol so numbers are assigned to protocols they are called as port number whatever the numbers you assign to any protocol they are called as port numbers why do we assign because computers don't understand the names so we will provide the numbers to any protocol and that number is called as port number you might have heard this terminology called port number but you don't know why it is assigned okay it is assigned to make the computers understand and port numbers are assigned by ICANN or IANA. So guys, there are 65,535 port numbers. And the port numbers are divided in three categories, three ranges. Well-known ports, registered ports, dynamic or private ports. Ports from 0 to 1023, they are called as well-known ports. Ports from 1024 to 49,151, they are called as registered ports. Port number from 49,152 to 65,535, they are called as dynamic ports or private ports. These well-known ports, also known as system ports, and are those numbers from 0 to 1,000. 23. So you can see these are the well known ports like FTP is having port number 20, SSH is having port number 22, and HTTP. You can see the port number is 80. And if it is HTTPS, the port number will be changed the 443. So these are called the ports are assigned to the protocols, they are called as well known ports and registered ports is a network port designated for use within with a certain protocol or application. So you will create one application and you will contact the INA. They will provide you this registered port number for your application. So registered ports are actually assigned by the INA and were assigned by so ICANN before 21st March. So before 21st March, this registered port were assigned by ICANN. Now, the responsibility is given to IN. IN is providing this registered ports. And we have dynamic or private ports. A port can be used by any computer application program to communicate with no registration. Okay, so what, what is this dynamic port number? They are used to communicate with another computer. Okay, they will use these ports. 49,152 to 65,535 port numbers. So you don't need any registration here. Okay, and they are for free. So dynamic ports are numbered from 49,152 to 65,535. So if the website is hosted on internet, it is accessible to all. And if the website is hosted on intranet, it is accessible to the users in your lab. Guys, is it clear till here or in doubt? There's no doubt, sir. Vikrant? Yes, sir. Any doubt? No, sir. Okay. All right, guys. So it was about. IIS, let us see the IIS lab. 